Hey everybody, this is Matt. I'm making a new Pokemon TCG video, and this video is going to be talking about some of the cards from the upcoming Pokemon TCG set, Evolutions, that I am interested in. And I'm not saying these are the best cards in this set, and there may be some I'm skipping over just because they don't interest me, but these are just ones that just pop out to me and I'm like, oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. So the first card I want to look at is the Arcanine from the Evolution set. So it has 130 hit points, and it has an ability, Burning Road. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon was on your bench and it became your active Pokemon this turn, you may move any number of fire energy attached to your Pokemon to this Pokemon. So basically, if it was on the bench and it became your active, you can move any amount of fire energy from any of your Pokemon to that Arcanine. So like if you had one energy on one Pokemon and another energy on another Pokemon, you could all move it to that Arcanine. And then for three fire and a colorless, Scorching Breath, it does 150 damage. This Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. So the ability is really interesting because there's multiple ways to work with it. And the, the ones that pop out to me right away is Floatstone and Zoroark. And, and, and uh, you know, both of those ways would allow you to get to the bench and then maybe bring up another Arcanine of some sort. With Zoroark, with a Floatstone on Zoroark, you could actually just have one Arcanine out. But if you just wanted to bypass the Zoroark, you could have an Arcanine, well, each with a Floatstone on it, and just swap between the two Arcanines. And looking at a Scorching Breath attack, this Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. It kind of makes sense why you want to try to bench Arcanine and bring up another Arcanine. Because that will remove that effect that's on him. And talking about effects on Arcanine, you could also use Pokemon Ranger to remove that effect on him and allow him to attack again without even having this bench him or anything. Um, you know, the attack cost is pretty high, I'll give you that. But you're not having to discard any energy, and you really only need four energy in play on any of your Pokemon at any point in order to start doing the 150. And he's a stage one, so it's really hard to get that 150 damage up to 170 or 180 or even really high up to like 210 or 220 that you may need it for. But it's still not a bad 150 damage. It'll KO uh, most non-EXs or non like stage two breaks or anything. Um, I just think it's an interesting card. So the next card I want to talk about is Ninetales Break and Ninetales from the Evolution set. So uh, let's just look at the Ninetales first off. So it has 100 hit points for one fire. This is the attack I really like, Lure. Switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with his or her active Pokemon. So it's like a gust of wind without the flip. And the new active Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. That's really nice because uh, a lot of people will put a float stone on something thinking if they bring it up I'll just free retreat next turn. Lure stops them from retreating. And then for two fire and a colorless fire blast, 120 damage. Discard a fire energy attached to this Pokemon. It's not the worst attack in the world, but it's not really something I could really see myself using. Especially when you look at the Ninetales break, which uh, for a fire and a colorless... Uh, you discard all fire energy attached to the Pokemon, and then the attack does 10 damage plus 60 more for each energy card discarded. So, I mean, if you're using Fire Blast and it costs 3 energy, you could discard all 3 energy with Explosive Fireball on the break, and you'd be doing 190 damage instead. Um, and I think it works really well because of the special fire energy, which, you know, will come back if you're discarding it with an attack. So that's really, really nice. And like I said, I really like the lure attack on Ninetales because, you know, I think about a lot of these EX decks and I think about their engine and how they use Shaman and how they use Hoopa EX. And a lot of the people will put a Floatstone on the Hoopa EX and think it's perfectly protected. But you bring him up with lure and now he's locked up there and he cannot retreat unless they have a switch. Most likely they're not going to have a switch. They're, it's, he's locked up there for a turn. Now I know what you're saying, Matt. What? Okay, so he's locked up there for a turn. What's the big deal? He's only locked up there for one turn. Well, here's the thing. If you if you tech an Eratita, which I think some people may tech an Eratita or two in some of their decks, 
and you rat it to them, you can remove the float stone on the whatever you bring up. And now, even though they can normally retreat, they won't have free retreat anymore. And you're saying, well, why would you want to just lock them up there not doing any damage? Well, that's where the other nine tails comes in. Because the other nine tails has the ability barrier shrine. Each player can't play any stadium cards from his or her hand. So what you want to do is you want to get out the faded town. And this really only works against Mega EXs. But thankfully Mega Mewtwo EX and Mega Scissor EX are pretty popular decks right now. So at any time between turns put two damage counters on each Mega Evolution Pokemon. Well if you're locking their active, if you've locked their Hoopa active and it can't get off the front, you just sit there and you just let the damage counters build up on their bench and stuff. You know, and if you really need to KO something, you can, you know, it gives you time to power up your stuff. Then you could just always Lysander out an EX you really need and use Explosive Fireball from the Ninetales Break and clean it up. I mean, I think, I think it's an, a decent little combination there that, uh, I like the Gust and Lock with the regular Ninetales. I like being able to lock stadiums with the Primal Clash Ninetales and then potentially remove their tool with Rattata and just keep doing disruptional damage with a stadium or whatever you're using it for. I mean, it's a really nice combination using nothing but stage ones and I guess a stage two with the break. But the break can go on either nine tails and they're both pretty decent nine tails. It's just a really interesting deck idea. So the next card I want to talk about is the Beedrill. He's really interesting. I mean, Beedrill has been one of those Pokemon. It's been really cool throughout the days, but has never really had a really strong version. And now we're getting like Beedrill EX and Mega Beedrill EX. And now we're getting this new Beedrill, which I think has a really nice attack. For one Grass Energy, Poison Sting does 30 damage in the opponent's active Pokemon. It's poisoned. Eh, we don't, we're not really concerned with that. But for a Grass and one Colorless, Swarming Sting. This attack does 40 damage times the number of Beedrill you have in play to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So, if you have four Beedrills in play, you can hit any one of your opponent's Pokemon for 160 damage. Now, that's not one-shotting any kind of EX or, well, some EXs. If it could one-shot a Shaman EX. Um, it maybe could one-shot a Manaphy EX, too. I'm not really sure the HP is on them. But... Against other EX is not one shotting, but you're able to selectively choose who to snipe with this, and that's really cool. Not only that, you could team it up with Ariados and just have the, their active, you know, taking poison every turn. That could be useful. Um, and you especially want to play it with Forest of Giant Plants so that you can set up all your Beedrills really, really fast. And I would probably say you, you would want a, a decent draw engine. So that you could just keep drawing cards and evolving and drawing cards and evolving and drawing cards and evolving. But uh, I, I really like the attack. You know, it's a stage two, but it doesn't take much energy. It has free retreat. And, you know, I mean, being able to snipe anything is just really, really useful. Because even if your opponent has a big threat up front, you can snipe their bench and maybe still take a few prizes that way. And if you're disrupting their active while sniping their bench in some way um i mean i think it could work really well i think he just needs a little bit more and he'd be really really nice the next card i want to talk about is mega slowbro ex he has 220 hit points he evolves from slowbro ex which i uh, not really worth even mentioning but for three water he does 100 damage Mega Slowbro EX is now confused. During your next turn, this Pokemon's Lol Roll Spin attack does 100 more damage before applying weakness and resistance. So, I mean, the downside is he becomes confused, but after you do that 100 damage, now you're doing 200, 200, 200. And that's really nice. And thankfully, there's a very easy answer to the confusion, and that is Chaos Tower. It's a stadium. And you can play it either uh, right side up or upside down. And one of the sides, if it's pointing towards your Pokemon, says this player's Pokemon cannot be confused. So that means Slowbro would not confuse himself. And he'd basically be allowed to just do 
a hundred, then two hundred, then two hundred, then two hundred, then two hundred. Two hundred damage for three water. It's pretty decent. You can't use double colorless energy, but I think with like Mega Turbo or even you know uh, Max Elixir, I think that's what it's called. When it's before it evolves, um, I think it would be not too bad powering it up, you know. And two hundred damage is pretty dang decent. It's pretty dang decent. It will knock out uh, most likely any EX that's not Mega Evolved and doesn't have a Fight and Fury belt on it. And if you're not an EX at all, yeah, you're definitely kablooied, you know? So uh, I just think it's really cool that Mega Slowbro EX is actually pretty decent, you know? Because Slowbro is one of those Pokemon that's never really gotten a lot of love in the past. I can't really think of any Slowbros that were like really popular. I remember the Neo Genesis Slow King was huge. But Slowbro? I, I just don't remember. So I'm happy to see this Mega Slowbro EX. It's a pretty cool card. The next card I want to talk about is Polyrath. And he plays a lot like the Arcanine I was talking about where you want to just keep switching them in and out and stuff. And that's because for one water, he has Dashing Punch. It has 50 damage plus 50 more if he was on your bench and became your active Pokemon. But the difference between him and Arcanine is that he only needs one water energy to do that. So while it's only doing 100 damage, it's something that can do 100 damage for one water energy. And can continuously do it every single turn given the right setup. So of course, you know, uh, you could have a Float Stone. You know, you could have a float stone and have between two different polyrafts and just switch between the two of them. Or you could put a float stone on Zoroark, you know, or you, I mean, you could even use the Manaphy EX. And because you already have water and energy attached, just be have free retreat thanks to it and just free retreat between the two polyrafts. So, I mean, it's nice. It doesn't do an amazing amount of damage. It will like one shot a Volcanian EX unless it has like a Fight and Fury belt on it. So that's kind of cool. Um, for 3 water, Whirlpool, 80 damage, discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. It's not the best attack, really. I do like the Disruptional Energy, guaranteed energy removal. But, um, I think, really, for me, it's more just the 1 energy for 100 damage. He's 140 hit points, which is kind of tanky, but I, he's interesting. He's interesting. I don't think he's going to blow anybody's socks off, but he's interesting. The next card I want to talk about is Starmie. So Starmie doesn't really have the best attack, but I'm really looking at it for its ability. Its ability is Space Beacon. Once during your turn, you may discard a card from your hand. If you do, put two basic energy cards from your discard pile into your hand. Um, so what's really nice is, you know, one combo that just jumped straight out of my mind was the Volcanian EX with his Steam Up ability. So you could discard a card from your hand uh, with Starmie, and then go get two fire energy from your discard pile, put it back into your hand, and then use, if you had two different Volcanians out, you could use Steam Up twice, and then your active fire Pokemon would be doing 60 more damage. And that's really nice, because, I mean, that's kind of what Volcanian EX needs to do with his attack, to do 190 That'll KO a lot of EXs unless they have a fl unless they have a Fight and Fury belt on them or something, and uh, it's just nice. Uh, I mean, you can you can afford to discard a card every turn if you're continuously taking prizes. It's okay to do it. The only downside is you can't choose a card you discarded with the effect of this ability. I wanted to I wanted to say like yeah, you could just discard an energy and bring back that one energy you discarded with another energy, but you can't do that. But there's, I mean, there's plenty of cards, uh, especially in any kind of Talonflame deck or deck that just, you know, has cards that get kind of dumb later on in the game that you can discard. Maybe a Stadium you don't need. I mean, there's, there's always some, some card you can discard, and sometimes it comes in use. Like if you're looking to discard a card, uh, you know, the bring back energy, you attach the energy, and then you shame it. You know, I mean, it gets your hand down. Maybe I think there's many different opportunities available for this Starmie. But the one that jumped out to me was Volcanian EX, and I think I'd like to try that. Especially with Volcanian EX being water type, and you can run the, the water Pokeball with it, you know? You can run it with Starmie too, Manaphy EX, Octillery. I mean, it's a really nice little thing there you're going, you know? So I think Starmie could see some play in the future. 
The last cards I want to look at starts with the Ratata. And I know he's only 40 hit points and he's a basic and you're going, w w why are you just looking at a basic mat? And it's because of his amazing ability. Uh, Mischievous Fang. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may discard all Pokemon tool cards attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. And that's invaluable. Because we lost Zero Sec. We lost uh, Starling Microphone. We lost ways to remove Pokemon tool cards. And thus cards like Fight and Fury Belt. Just tools became just guaranteed things that can never go away. Like a float stone, you know. Um, you know they're guaranteed they're going to stay on there. You know, and it's because we lost all the ways to remove it. So with Rattata, that gives us a way to remove those Pokemon tool cards. And yes, it can only be applied to the opponent's active Pokemon. But there are ways around that. There's Lysander that can bring it up. You got the new Ninetales, which can bring up any Pokemon. There's there's ways around it, you know. And uh, Rattata has a really cool evolution line. A, a lot of cool cards working with this evolution line I want to talk about. So the next card I want to take into is the Raticate, you know. And the Raticate from this set, 60 hit points. Anything in the game can one-shot this thing. I mean, it's really low hit points. And that's kind of how the whole Raticate line is. But for one colorless, it does 10 damage, guaranteed discarded energy attached to the opponent's active Pokemon. So not only can you discard their tool, but you could discard an energy attached to them, which could be really useful. And then for one colorless, 60 damage times the number of special energy cards in the opponent's discard pile. So that's really interesting. It multiplies really rapidly. If they have one in there, you're doing 60. Okay, that's not that much. If they have two in there, you're now doing 120 for one energy. That's pretty dang good. But if they have three in there, that's 180 damage for one energy and you don't shuffle them back into their deck afterwards they stay there you know so the more special energy the opponent's running the stronger it's going to be and the stronger late game it's going to be i mean suddenly if they get four in there you're doing 240 damage you're one-shotting basically everything other than like a well or dx now i know the raticate won't work that well for decks that don't use special energy like uh, Greninja decks, you know, and that's where I really like how the evolution line kind of spans out, you know, you have other options, and some of those options are the Raticate, you know, from Breakpoint, you know, you, you, he can, uh, there, there's that whole combo, you know, with the Raticate Break, where uh, you basically use Ariados, and you poison them, but you can't be poisoned, and then you use Raticate Break's uh, uh, attack, Super Fang, Put damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon until it has 10 hit points remaining. Then the poison kicks in and you one-shot them. Well, here's the thing, though. You really don't need the Raticate from Breakpoint. I know his ability, Antibodies, is like, oh yeah, that's how you don't get poisoned. But at the same exact time, you, you can also take advantage of Chaos Tower, the stadium. In the stadium, you could say, your Pokemon don't get poisoned. So if you're doing that, you can use the Raticate from Evolutions with the Raticate Break from Breakpoint. You see what I'm saying there, you know? So basically, you have two different options there. Basically, you can start going for their Special Energy if you want and try to do a lot of damage there. Or you can just fall back on the Ariados Chaos Tower combination. You know, and maybe maybe you throw in a, a sneak Raticate from Breakpoint. Just for the the case where you can't get the stadium out, you know? But, I mean, you could also team it up with Ninetales. You know, team it up with Ninetales so you can lock the stadium, you know? And, oh, wait, wait, didn't I say that earlier where Ninetales could gust up a Pokemon and then Raditata could remove the Floatstone? Are, are we coming up with a deck idea right here? Raticate, Ninetales? Hmm, that sounds like an interesting deck idea. But, I mean... The Raticate's cool because there's multiple ways to remove energy. You have Enhanced Hammer that can remove a special energy attached to any of the opponent's Pokemon. You can use Crawdot that can remove energy attached to the active Pokemon when they ever it evolves. There's just many ways to remove energy. So, summing it all up for this Radita Raticate lineup, 
you can remove their tools, remove their spe special energy, do more damage for more special energy in their discard pile. You can poison and one it KO any Pokemon basically with the break and it's just a lot of disruption and it's a really cool line that basically has no hit points whatsoever but can disrupt the heck out of the opponent and maybe get some really sneaky KOs in the process. So I'm really interested in this Raticate deck. Looking at the set overall, I say, you know, it's really it's really nice to see some of these old cards get reprinted, but at the same exact time, for the majority of them, they just don't scale well. You know, you look at them and you're like, oh, okay, this thing does that much damage for that much energy? Um, no, not really. No, thank you. You know, it just doesn't scale well. It's very, it, the set is very reminiscent you reminisce you it brings back memories yes but overall I would say the set is not very playable and it's not a set I would recommend people really invest into it may be better of a set to buy singles of and stuff but I think it's gonna be a great set to collect um, a great set to collect the full set and put it in your binder maybe even put it right next to the original base set cards if you still have it it's gonna be a really beautiful set especially the Charizard I love the Charizard I think it's gonna be interesting but I wouldn't invest too much into it well I hope you enjoyed watching this video where I kinda of broke apart the some of the cards from the upcoming evolutions Pokemon TCG set that I'm interested in and talked about why I like them and the combinations and combos that I could, I would envision doing with them, and I, I hope you uh, learned something new about the Pokemon TCG game, and I hope you had fun watching. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video and support this channel. Uh, I hope you have a fantastic time playing Pokemon TCG in the future. Have a great day, everybody. Bye bye.